let's talk about hyper and hypokalemia. When I'm talking about hypo and hyperkalemia, I'm talking about potassium. It is shown by a K. Don't get it confused with the P that is actually phosphorus. So the K, the potassium, should be between 3.5 and 5.0. You may see some variance with your textbook or what your instructors teach, but the levels are all pretty close and it depends on the particular uh, facilities and textbooks and what tools they're using to measure the potassium in the body. So what can cause the potassium to be low? It can be caused by uh, GI losses, and this is through vomiting, diarrhea, or uh, NG tubes sucking out the gastric contents because there's a lot of potassium in the gastric contents, in the stomach and in the bowels. You can also lose potassium in diuretics, such as loop diuretics, furosemide, also known as Lasix, is the, the main example. You can also see hypokalemia from a loss of potassium from your skin, for sweating out your electrolytes, or if you have a burn that is weeping fluids, you can lose potassium there. A low potassium diet can also cause low potassium levels. And shifts um, of potassium in the body, so there's potassium in the cells and potassium in the blood. And what we're measuring here is the potassium in the blood. So if you have a shift from that potassium from the blood into the cells, then you can see uh, low blood potassium levels. An example of this would be uh, if a patient was acidotic, they have a lot of potassium uh, and acid in their blood, and when you treat it, it's all reabsorbed and they could lose, a, it will look like their potassium levels have dropped. Also, insulin, for example, is uh, allows cells to absorb sugars and electrolytes such as potassium. So if you give big doses of insulin, it can make the potassium levels drop. Now, hyperkalemia is caused by increased amounts of potassium entering the patient, whether this is uh, through diet or through IV therapy. It can be caused by decreased excretion of the potassium. So the patient is supposed to be able to get rid of excess potassium, but they can't because their kidneys don't work with chronic kidney disease. It could be because they're taking diuretics known as potassium sparing diuretics that will hold on to potassium and ACE inhibitors can also cause the patient to hold on to potassium. The other cause would be a shift in the potassium. I told you in this case it would be from the cells to the bloodstream. So if a patient has some uh, major trauma or uh, that causes the cells to be ruptured such as a burn, uh, all the potassium in the cells will rupture into the bloodstream and you'll see high potassium levels. This is also seen with uh, myocardial infarctions and surgery. And in other cases, diabetic ketoacidosis or any kind of acidosis will allow the potassium to be excreted into the blood. So let's talk about signs and symptoms. Potassium's one of its biggest impacts is on the heart. And so with low or high potassium, you'll see dysrhythmias. But one big thing you'll want to see, and you'll see this on the test, is low potassium will cause something called a U wave. Okay? And so you want to remember U waves are hypokalemia. Now, potassium, very much like salt, also affects skeletal muscles, and so when the levels are off, you're going to have problems with the muscle contractility. And so you'll have, at first, paresthesias, which is the numbness and tingling, but it'll, and weakness, and, but it'll eventually lead to paralysis, because you're not able to use that sodium-potassium pump effectively. Okay, one of, the, one of the big differences, though, between hypo and hyperkalemia is what it does to the GI system. So if you have low levels of potassium, it's going to have decreased GI motility. And you can think of this as there's supposed to be a lot of potassium in the stomach, but say they're vomiting it or they're having diarrhea, well, the stomach's going to slow down and try to hold on to it. So you may have nausea. Unfortunately, when your bowels start stopping and it may cause an ileus, you may have vomiting because you can't get anything through your system. As opposed to hyperkalemia, you're trying to get rid of that excess potassium and so the patient's going to have diarrhea to try to push the potassium out. So treatment, when you have low potassium, you want to give IV or PO potassium, but never bolus IV and that's always on the test. And you're going to want to go ahead and put the patient on a heart monitor so that you can keep track of any dysrhythmias. And you're going to want to monitor their kidney function to make sure if they do go into renal insufficiency that they don't go from this side to the other spectrum. Now, treatment for hyperkalemia is a little bit more extensive. If it's an emergent situation, the patient's having some bad dysrhythmias, some uh, treatments involve calcium gluconate or calcium chloride IV. 
And all this does is it's not a solution, but it's a temporary protection. And what it does is it will protect the heart from the high amounts of potassium from causing some fatal dysrhythmias. T another temporary treatment would be giving insulin uh, to the patient IV, not subcutaneous. And what this will do is it, like I told you, it allows the cells to, to absorb potassium and, and sugar. Well, you give them insulin, and to make sure that their sugars don't drop and they go hypoglycemic, you give them some IV uh, sugar at that same time. And this is just until you can find a better solution. This is what they do to protect the patient in the meantime. Uh, if they're having acidosis causing their hyperkalemia, you want to give them sodium bicarb to help correct the acidosis. Now, one solution for eliminating potassium from the body is k -exalate. and what this does is it absorbs with the potassium in the body and in the GI system and it's going to give the patient diarrhea and it's going to push the potassium out of their body. You want to have them on a low potassium diet so they're not getting more potassium in their body. You can take, put them on loop diuretics to help them to urinate out the potassium. And in extreme situations, and especially in end-stage renal disease, you're going to do hemodialysis and that's going to correct all the electrolyte issues, especially the potassium in the patient's body. So this video went a little over on time, but uh, hypo and hyperkalemia are something you'll see very often, and I want to make sure you all had a good understanding. So this is hypo and hyperkalemia. I'm fucking redoing that video. It's only like 6 minutes and 30 seconds. It's not terrible.